The Egyptian gods are ancient, powerful beings that have ruled over the land of Egypt for centuries. But, which one of them would we see if Kratos and our friends from the rest of the God of War series make it over to Egypt? Let's find out. Number 1. Ra How can we talk about Egyptian mythology without naming one of the most powerful and famous gods of the Egyptian pantheon? Ra is the god of the sun and the higher god or ruler of the Egyptian pantheon, kind of like Zeus and Odin they are to their respective pantheons, but also known as the father of all creation. He can be seen with the head of a falcon and wearing a headdress that depicts the sun with a snake. And Ra has a pretty mysterious beginning. One source says he was created by nothing, another says Ra created himself, and another source says that he was born from a blossoming lotus flower. Don't ask me how or why this happened, but from the sources that I have read, the lotus flower bloomed out of the world covered in water known as the Ocean of Chaos. And with Ra's birth, he brought the sun, so there are variations about Ra's beginnings, but this does not change who Ra will become after his birth. And from here, he created many different gods. A few of them will be talked about in this video, by the way, which is why he's considered the creator god. But some scholars say that this is not the case, and gives the creator god status to Atum. But this is kind of a different discussion for another day. Ra carries the sun across the sky in his sunboat every day, and at night, he has to traverse through the underworld to start anew the next day. But during his travels through the underworld, he is attacked every night. The monstrous snake named Apophis, or Apep, the Snake of Chaos, tries to prevent Ra from returning the sun to the sky to try to destroy life on Earth. But, good thing Ra is not alone in his fight, which will be discussed later in this video. Now being the chief or leader of the Egyptian gods, Ra almost has to be in God of War if they do make a trip to Egypt, and Kratos taking on a god that holds the power of the sun in his hands. Sounds like an epic battle that could rival almost any god that Kratos has killed in the past. Number 2, Osiris. Osiris, also known as Usair, and potentially worshipped by the Romans as Serapis, is the ruler of the dead, but also has the power over life from the underworld, fertility, and also growing crops along the Nile. Osiris is the son of the earth and sky gods Geb and Nut, in most sources at least, but also could be the son of Ra, depending on what scholar or source you cite. But this is not important right now. Even though Osiris is known for the previous traits as a god, he did not always have these traits. After his birth, Osiris became ruler over Egypt and taught the Egyptian people agriculture and structure for the civilization by constructing laws. Osiris was seen as a just ruler, but not everyone thought so, especially Osiris' own family. His brother Seth, or Set, was extremely jealous of his brother and wanted everything Osiris had, including ruler of Egypt. So, Seth made a plan. Seth and his conspirators created a chest that was just the right size for Osiris and somehow kind of convinced him to get inside it. When Osiris did this for whatever reason, Seth and his followers locked him inside the chest and threw him into the Nile, or the seas depending on which sources that you come from, and drowned him. After his drowning, Seth found the chest within Egypt once again, and proceeded to chop up Osiris into 14 parts and spread him all around Egypt. I mean, I've seen and heard a couple of different stories kinda like this, but damn Seth! Seth then ruled in Osiris' place in Egypt, but Osiris' wife Isis, with help of the goddess Nephthys, found the body parts and with help from Anubis, who is the child of Osiris, resurrected him from his parts, and then Anubis gave the ruling of the underworld to Osiris, where he currently presides to pass judgment over the dead and was actually the first mummy. And okay, I am a huge sucker for death gods, especially in mythology and in the God of War series such as Hades and Thanatos, but Osiris would be an awesome god to take on in his realm of the underworld. Number 3, Isis. Isis, which is actually her more well-known Greek name, and her Egyptian name is actually a set, but that's a whole different discussion, is the goddess of magic, healing, and is the wife slash sister of the god Osiris. 
Isis was a very important goddess to the Egyptian people because she was known to have many more powers than just magic and healing, such as being the protector of women among others. Over the thousands of years of worship, Isis transformed into the queen of the universe and by Roman times was believed to control fate itself. One of Isis's most famous stories was the one that was mentioned in the section of Osiris, where Seth killed his brother Osiris by throwing him in a chest, then throwing that chest into the Nile slash sea. What was left out of the previous section is that Isis loved her husband so dearly that she searched and searched for the chest with the goddess once again, Nephthys, who is actually the wife of Seth and her sister until they did. They then brought Osiris still within the chest back to Egypt, and this is where Seth found it and then decided to have like a big Osiris butcher party. And the rest of the story from here stays the same. After Osiris lived again, nine months later, Isis gave birth to a son named Horus, who would seek justice for his father and reclaim his rightful place on the Egyptian throne. So essentially, this is an extremely similar story to the Shakespearean classic Hamlet, or if you're kind of a big Disney fan out there, The Lion King. So having Isis in an Egyptian God of War game is almost a must, but you never know with the geniuses over at Sony Santa Monica and what they will come up with. And just so you know, the like and subscribe buttons are chopped up in a bunch of pieces as well, so resurrect them by hitting them. Number four, Bast. Bast, also known as Bastet, is the goddess that has changed quite a bit over the time of Egyptian mythology. Bast, who was usually represented with the head of a lioness in her early years, but later on with the head of a house cat, is typically known as the daughter of the sun god Ra. But due to many different sources, she has also been considered Ra's mother, Ra's sister, or even Ra's wife. But this is also up for debate. But saying that she was represented as a cat means that she was widely worshipped across the territory. This is because cats were very important to the ancient Egyptian people because they helped get rid of diseases by keeping rats and mice population down. By this, Bass became the protector of the home, pleasure, joy, music, fertility, good health, and war. She is known in some sources to ride with her father Ra across the sky in his sunboat to watch over and protect him. When the boat approached and dove into the underworld, Bass would transform into a cat to help battle against the Snake of Chaos, Apep, in the underworld so they could bring the sun back to the world the next day. Due to this duty that she does not take lightly, she has been given nicknames such as the Lady Goddess of the East, Goddess of the Rising Sun, and the Sacred All-Seeing Eye. Bass has also been worshipped in many different places, such as her main place of worship, which is located in Lower Egypt, but was also again adopted into the Roman Empire, and traces of her can be seen in Rome, Ostia, Nemi, and the city of Pompeii. Now, given the fact that Bass was widely worshipped by many people for thousands of years, and her importance to everyday life to the Egyptian people, Bast, in my opinion, is a must-have god if God of War is set in Egyptian mythology. And is it kind of just me, or does Bast have a lot in common with Freya? I'm not pointing out any type of connection there that Freya and Bast currently might have, but they do seem to have a lot of similarities, don't they? Number 5, Sobek. Sobek, also called Sebek and Sukos, is one of the older Egyptian gods known to the world, who is actually inscribed on many walls of many tombs found in the region. Sobek is a son of Seth, the god of the desert and earthquakes, and the mortal enemy to the god of the dead Osiris, as said earlier in the video. He also has a connection with the sky god Horus, who is the son of Osiris and Isis, because he helped in Horus' birth. So, I kinda guess Sobek is playing both sides of the coin, but yeah, you know. So Beck was mainly associated with crocodiles and the Nile River, but also with fertility, mainly due to him helping with the birth of Horus and the great vegetation that the Nile brought as well. In saying this, I do see there's a lot of similarities between Osiris and Sobek here, but my kind of theory about this is that when Osiris died and went to the underworld, kind of Sobek kind of swooped in and kind of became the Nile god with the vegetation and everything, but this is just kind of me spitballing here. The military of Egypt typically were the people who worshipped Sobek the most. 
just due to his ferocity, and because of this, he became the patriot god for the Egyptian military for a lot of centuries. But Sobek also had some honest beginnings. He started as a small deity that was mainly worshipped in the town of Sedet in modern day Fayum under King Narmer. But his worship, like many gods, spread throughout the Roman Empire as well. Now, after saying all this, a crocodile god that is associated with the Egyptian military and obviously has a connection with war, is there any doubt that Sobek's gonna be in a God of War game set in Egypt? What do you think? And what gods do you want to see in an Egyptian game of God of War? Tell me in the comments down below, and I will see you all next time. Good night.